hello everyone and welcome back to another video so in this video we are going to look at some more pseudo codes and this is a part 2 which is an uh, continuation to our previous video so if you have not watched that please check out that video first i will provide the link in the cards above and if you have not subscribed to our channel and are new on this channel make sure to subscribe to the channel as well so let's get started so in this question you have to predict the output for the following pseudo code where you have integer uh, p q and r and the variables p and q have been assigned a value 5 and 7 and the variable r has then been assigned anything yet but what students commit the most is that they start processing each and every line uh, in a sequential manner which is a uh, little, little bit time consuming which you should not do you need to try to look at the code first and that is what we are going to do here right now so you can see that the variable r is storing a variable value each time the operations are being performed so first of all it is storing the xor of p and q next time it is storing the value of the and operation between p and q and at last it is storing the value p plus q in r so you can prevent two operations uh, which are unnecessary in this case and directly come to your final answer so in this case you can see that the variable r will be storing the most recent value that will be the sum of p and q that is 7 plus 5 or 5 plus 7 equals to 12 so the variable r is now storing the value 12 and then you can simply print your value uh, 5 plus 7 plus 12 which is nothing but 24 so option number c is the final answer that is 24 so this is one of the very easy questions so i am not providing any further explanation to it in the form of slides so let's look at the next question in this question you again have a pseudo code which has two variables integer j and m and you have to uh, follow some of the steps mentioned in this particular code so let's take a minute pause the video try to solve it on your own and then come back to your answers and then we will be evaluating what your answer should be all right so i expect you pause the video and try to solve it on your own so let's get started and see what will be the answer in this case so you can see that you have a list of uh, integers say um, or you can say an array of uh, four integers 1 11 21 and 12 and then you are running a for loop in this particular question in the for loop you can see that the variable j is running from 0 to 3 or you can simply say that it is running three times so in this case if j minus 1 is greater than jth element of your array a plus 3 if that is the condition if it is greater then you have to jump out of the loop and then your if statement ends and after this you have to assign the variable m the value of the jth element and then your for loop will be ending so this is the same procedure which you have to follow for all the elements so what you can conclude from this particular for loop is that every time you are doing this operation you are going to evaluate to a value so uh, let's start you can get an idea by following this for the further number of steps and you can easily make out your answer as well so uh, starting with the first value so initially the value of j will be 0 so 0 minus 1 is minus 1 so minus 1 will not be greater than the first element of your array a plus 3 so minus 1 is obviously not greater than uh, 4 so you won't enter inside of the if loop and the variable m will now store the value 1 which will be the first value from your array a following this for the second time you will see that the variable j will now store 1 since uh, we are following a 0 based index so 0 since 1 minus 1 will be 0 is greater than 11 plus 3 so is 0 greater than 14 no so you will jump out of the loop and then your variable m will store the value 11 the next time you do it the variable j will store the value 3 so 3 minus 1 will be 2 is it greater than uh, 21 plus 3 that is 24 obviously no so you will again end the loop and you will come out so in this manner you have to follow this particular set of procedures once you do it you will see that your answer evaluates to 21 so that is how you will be evaluating this complete statement so let's look at another question so in this question you have three variables a b and c again the variable a and b are storing two values and then there is a for loop following which you have to print the output i would request you to pause this video try this question on your own and then evaluate the answer so hoping you tried this question on your own let's look at the answer now 
So in this case, as you can see, we have uh, two variables a and b, which have the value two assigned to each of it. And then you are running a loop that is uh, from two to four, you are running this loop two times. But there is a catch in this case. What is the catch? As you can see that there is a continue statement written here. So whenever you encounter continue, you ignore the rest of the codes and then you run the loop for the next iteration. So in this case, your C will run in the initial phase for the first time. It will encounter continue. It will just move away and then go for the second iteration. So in this code, in the fifth line where you can see that um, the variable A is getting the value assigned as A plus C and then you are jumping out of the loop. This particular code is unreachable. So due to the continuous statement, you never reach that particular part of the code. And at last you simply print the value of A and B. So your output for this question will be four. So here's an explanation for what we have been doing in this particular code. Since you encounter the continuous statement, you never reach the rest of the code and you end, end this for loop after iterating and reaching and encountering the continuous statement twice following which you print the sum of A and B. So four is the final answer. So let's look at another question. So in this question, you have to predict the output again. It is a small set of code, but you have to solve it properly in order to get the final answer. That should be obviously correct. So um, in this case, let's look at uh, what will be the final answer. First of all, I would request you to pause this video again, try to solve it on your own and then come to the final answer. So hoping you solve this question on your own, let's look at the explanation of it now so that it will help you understand it better. So your answer is 11 in this case and how we are arriving at that answer. Let's look at it. So your function contains two integer variables a and b which have the value four and three since the function is being called in the last statement if you have noticed. So is four greater than three? Yes, it is greater than three. So the variable B will be holding some value which will be the XOR operation between B and something which is provided in the bracket. So obviously you solve the brackets first. So you go with A and B which is uh, the AND operation between four and three which will result in zero. Obviously you have to do this operation in binary. So uh, be aware of that particular thing. So the binary AND operation between four and three results in zero. Then you add zero to A that is zero plus four which will be four. So the expression after the XOR uh, symbol will hold the value as four. So you do the XOR operation between three and four. So your variable B will now hold the value as seven since the XOR operation between three and four will result in the value seven. After which you will return the value of A plus B that is uh, seven plus four. Uh, the variable A will contain the value as 4 and the variable B will now have the updated value that is 7. So 4 plus 7 will be 11 and so uh, the answer will be option number B in this case. So let's look at another question now. So in this particular question you are given a function and in this function you are going to pass the value 1 comma 1 and you have to predict the output for the same. Since in many of the pseudocode problems, uh, the pseudocode will be given to you and the statement will explain what you have to do inside of this function. So this is one of those types of questions. So directly it is not mentioned what you are passing inside of the function. There will be statements which will mention what you have to do with the function. So in this function, you have to pass the variable values as one and one and you have to predict the output in this case. So let's start by uh, first giving it a try. Try it by yourself. Pause the video and take a minute to solve it. So I hope you tried it on your own. Let's look at the solution now. So we are passing the variable values a and b that will be 1 and 1. So if b is less than 0 and a is less than 0, you have to return 1. One thing which you need to ensure is that we are not doing a bit manipulation operation. That is we are not doing a bit bitwise and because if that was the case, it would have been exclusively mentioned. So it's not mentioned over here. It is the general and and or operations which we perform. So if B is less than zero and A is less than zero, you have to return one else. You have to return A plus the function which will hold the values A minus one comma A minus two. So this is a recursive call to the same function with updated values. So since we are passing one and one, 
in the first case uh, the if condition will fail because both a and b will be greater than 0 it will jump into the else loop and since a is holding the value 1 you are going to call the function with the updated values since they are a minus 1 and a minus 2 so in both the cases the variable a will hold the value as a minus 1 or 1 minus 1 and the variable b will be holding the value as a minus 2 so now in both the cases uh, since a and b will be less than 0 you will return value as 1 so you have to return that particular value now you might wonder that um, we have end if statement and then we are also writing return b but take a minute and try to think that is it even reachable just like we saw in the previous example that um, a part of the code was not even reachable so your answer is going to change accordingly because you have to see where your conditions evaluate to true and where your answer will evaluate to the actual answer so in this case you are going to return a plus 1 that will be 1 plus 1 and the answer will be 2 which is the option number b so uh, this was the explanation for the same since um, the second last statement that is return b is not reachable so you don't encounter that statement in any time in your code and that is why it has been ignored so your answer will be 2 so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video and got something out of it make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel and share this video to the one who needs it also you can join our telegram channels for further updates and notifications on our new videos for which all the links are mentioned in the description box below you can go check them out so once again thank you for watching this video make sure to subscribe to the channel and as always keep learning and keep programming